Welcome. I'm Elaine miller Karras, the co-founder of the Trauma Resource Institute. We began the Ukrainian Humanitarian Resiliency Project on February 24th, when a group of Ukrainian educators from EdCamp met with us requesting immediate humanitarian assistance to provide a series of community resiliency model webinars for the Ukrainian people as a result of the Russian invasion. We immediately mobilized a team which includes included members of our global international community, including Dr. Joy Miller of Resiliency 2022, CRIM teachers and translators. Within 24 hours, a program was created and a customized curriculum designed specifically for this crisis was put into motion. To date, over 12,000 Ukrainians have listened to our webinars. Our Ukrainian colleagues have great respect for Dr. Edie Eager and her, and her book, The Choice, Embrace the Possible, has been translated in, into Ukrainian. She delivered a message of hope at the onset of the invasion, as, and now she is with us today to continue her message to the Ukrainian people. Desmond Tutu said about Dr. Eager, her life reveals our capacity to transcend even the greatest of horrors and to use that suffering for the benefit of others. She has found true freedom and forgiveness and shows us how we can as well. Dr. Joy Miller, her colleague and dear friend, will conduct the interview with Dr. Eager and welcome both Joy and um, Dr. Eager to the show. And I will now turn it over to you, Joy. First of all, I wanna thank Elaine for everything and for everyone at TRIM for what they're doing. And let me go straight to, to Edith. Um, I think the first thing I should start with, my dear friend, is you were interned in Auschwitz. You lived with uncertainty, never knowing what might happen. So what message do you have for everyone listening today? There is one thing we cannot change is the past. And we don't know what the future is. So my message to you is that See how you cannot control what is outside of you. You cannot control the external circumstance, but you can always have the ultimate control not to allow anything or anyone to murder your spirit. That is what I would like to really let you know. It's almost like being born again and being born free free from, from unfortunate, uh, un, un, you know, we never really imagined something like that could happen. It's totally unexpected, maybe not, maybe unanticipated, I don't know. But I know that if, if you are telling yourself, let me tell you so you can repeat it. I don't like it, it's inconvenient, it's almost unbearable, and it's temporary, and I can survive it. No, don't say yes, but. And, yes, and. Yes, and. Furthermore, because when you say yes, but, you're going to cancel what you said before the but. So I, that's not a good word in my vocabulary. The other word that I, it's not in my vocabulary is I can't. I can't. I can't. So to write it down, I can't on a blackboard and then take the eraser and take out the T and the apostrophe and say, I can. Yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I will. Yes, yes, yes. I am in charge. I am a take charge person. I'm in charge of my thinking, my feeling, and of course, my behavior. The positive thinking doesn't do any good unless it's followed with a positive action. Especially when I work with young people, they gonna do this and they gonna do that. And I call them gonna people, you know? They always gonna, but they, <laughs> they procrastinate. <laughs> you see, I'm gonna do it. So um, be your own, own boss, be your own, a person in charge of your thinking. And if you want to say anything, 
ask yourself, is it important? Is it very, very important? And is it necessary? And most of all, is it kind? That's beautiful. It, yes. If it's not kind, treat yourself really with kindness. I know you could have done what you should have done, but that's in the past and that we cannot change. I stay in the present. I had to be so careful in Auschwitz not to allow the enemy to get to me. I, I, I turned hatred to pity. I, I, I felt so sorry for those guards that I can be so mean, so rude, so terribly, not something that God created us to be. I, I, I don't want to say I know how you feel. That would be stupid of me. I don't know how you feel, but I'm here coming to you to let you know that hopefully, hopefully, you are going to be saved and tell your story to your children, to the grandchildren, that you can be the role model for all of us, for, for us all, how to really cope with the unexpected and the unanticipated. Thank you. Edie, you know, your book, The Choice, was translated in Ukrainian. But for those people who were not able to read it, what is the choice? The choice you always have, and I can tell you that when I was in Gunskirchen and the place where I was liberated, cannibalism broke out. I hope nobody can ever experience when a person is eating another person's flesh. Okay, and I like you to, if you see a movie, uh, I, I would like you to see that one. It's um, uh, the, the movie. The Joy of Music. No. Uh, the, the Sound of the music. Sound music. Because I remember in that movie, um, she is looking up at God and, and, and she is on a wonderful place. Um, and uh, I, I turned to God, I said, what do I do, God? Because I don't want to touch human flesh. And I was told to look down and I had grass to eat. I was in, I was in Israel when I talked to a guy called Moshe Dayan. He had one eye, and I told him the story. And he said, you know what? I did the same thing. Even then I had a choice. I chose one blade of grass over and against the other. So I can't, it's not really good for you to say, I cannot fly, I don't have wings, you know. Uh, <laughs> but I can change my attitude and I can recognize that we're not born to hate. We're not born to judge others. We learn it. And anything we can learn, we can unlearn. So this is a good time out. Like in America, we talk about time out when people play football. I don't know a thing about football, but I know time out means to regroup, to re-decide that you don't do the same thing over and over again. And Albert Einstein said, if you do that, that's a definition of insanity. So you and I have talked about this before, the power of connections. Mm -hmm. How do you think that helps people today that are struggling with yes. what's happening? I think, I think this is the key to transcend the me, me, me and the I, I, I and commit ourselves to someone, something other than ourselves that is really necessary. Really, truly, the food that you give yourself that I don't like it, you don't have to say that you do because you certainly have not had enough practice in that. 
but uh, maybe you did pray for the enemy, I don't know. But all I can tell you that no one can touch me unless I give them permission. True. The people can call me stupid, anything, anything. So I think the community of people is, and this is the time to do that. But don't ask, how are you? And don't say, why don't you? Because we women ask questions, we mothers ask questions and give advice. And I don't think that's a good thing to do <laughs> because our children will lie to us and tell us what we want to hear rather than what is really going on. So I think it can really be a time out to redecide how you are going to hold on to the things that really will help you and what you let go of. And one of the things you let go of under these conditions, you're not seeking other people's compliment of you or anything like that. You are at the bottom, at the bottom when you have to reach deep, truly, not to give in and not to give up. So I, I give you all my, not sympathy, but empathy. And empathy means that I'm crawling under your skin and I want to be there for you, precious Ukrainians. I am there with my heart and soul with you. And I'm hoping that someday we're going to hug and we're going to eat your wonderful food. And I'm going to give you my Hungarian uh, paprika and uh, that this is temporary. And yes, you can survive. And you, you can see from the message the importance of connections. And I know how important Edie's words are. My, my last question to you, Edie, is if someone today is holding their child, what, what might they say to them to have them feel safer? If they're holding their child, what might they say to their child? You can lie to a child. You can tell them what will happen even if you don't know what's going to happen. You can just say, you know, there'll never be another you. You're the only one. You're the only one, the special one, the one of a kind, unique, authentic you. That's not a lie. And that's not <laughs> a lie. But <laughs> it you have well, I usually tell mothers when when the father um takes a plane somewhere. Is the plane going to to wreck? And and I tell mother to say no. That's that's a lie because you don't know. So why don't you just uh, um, that's that that's what I say about that. But I think it's important for a child to know one word: hope. Hope to find hope in hopelessness, to find that little wonderful diamond, even in a garbage pile. That's important that this is temporary, I can survive it, I don't like it. I never, never, never ever thought that this is going to happen. And it is unfair, it's really terrible, and, and, not but, and I'm here, and I'm one of a kind, and my attitude will help others too, and I want to be a spirit that never, never dies. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I, I'm, I'm sure there's questions I didn't ask. Is there something else that you want to say to the people of Ukraine? Get rid of two words, always and never. Get rid of it. It's absolutistic word. I always, I never just say this is this is unexpected. This is something I uh, never wanted to be part of. And I'm using every moment to empower myself and not depleting myself. 
So take your temperature every time you can. Do I want to feel soft and warm? Do I want my heart to be warm and soft, not cold and stiff? I think you can choose. You can choose your attitude that you always have left, the way you look at things. As I said, positive thinking does nothing unless it's followed with a positive action. So hug yourself, give yourself a good, good, good mommy <laughs> hug and be a good mommy to you. You have a little girl, little boy in you and, and, and tell that little child, I am here for you. I will not ever leave you. I, you can count on me. And I think that's all we had then in Auschwitz is each other. And all you have now is each other in Ukraine, too. I wish I could be there, give you that warm hug. So I'm doing it. I'm doing it as well as I can to think of you and knowing, hopefully, that this is temporary and you can survive it. So say to yourself, yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I will. Beautiful. And I have one favor of you, my dear friend. Uh, there's a gentleman named Alexander who, who first started this and in Ukraine, and he's one of the educators. Wow. And he was the one who said, I need to hear from Edith. This will help me. We've not heard from last I talked to Elaine, we have not heard from Alexander for over three days, four days. I'm praying that he can hear you now. Will you please say just a little something to him? Oh, how wonderful to know that maybe someday you and I are going to exchange philosophies that we are for something rather than against. And uh, I hope I can see you, Alexander, because you are Alexander the Great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. You're a great one that were sent here in the world to be our angel, to be our role model, and to never ever give up. So I'm hoping that I can see your picture, maybe, and hopefully we can meet and I'll cook for you good Hungarian food. Thank you so much, my dear friend. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your love, your passion, and for all you've done for the world. You, you are a miracle. Thank you. Uh, we all are, all are. Thank you. You're a brilliant interviewer on top of that. So come to see me, and we're going to be together, hopefully, in person. We will. We will. Elaine, I leave it to you. I just want to thank the two of you so yeah. much. Um, Dr. Eager, your words are going to resonate throughout Ukraine, throughout the world. We are going to get this out into social media. And, and my dear friend, Alexander Elkin, is going to hear these words, who just who last year said, can't you get her for me? And so, <laughs> oh my gosh, you've invited him to your home. I cannot say enough that what that would mean to him and to all the the educators that we have met who are valiantly um, living in Ukraine at this moment and mm -hmm. and living in such terror. Oh, but thank you so much for your words and joy. Mm -hmm. You know, Joy and I have the same last name, and we've said we were uh, we are mothers with other <laughs> we are sisters with other mothers. Um, mm -hmm. So, Joy Miller, thank you for your wisdom, and I agree with Edie. You did a lovely job interviewing her, so I thank you both so much. Um, and until we meet again, um, thank you. Until we meet again. Until all, we meet again. Until we meet again. And to all our Ukrainian friends who are listening, we wish you love, compassion, peace, and hope. Thank you. My hope that we will maybe have a good, you know what I make good? I, I make also stuffed cabbage that I'm sure the Ukrainians would 
enjoy having my stuffed cabbage. I think they might. Um, you know, Edie, you don't remember, you may not remember this, but I came to your house for lunch with my <laughs> dear friend, Dr. Uh, Anita Bowling. Um, oh, yeah. And Anita is one of my good friends here in Claremont. And we had a lovely lunch at your home. Thank so you. I just feel like full circle. Here we are again together. It's a small world. It's a small world. It's a small world. It's a small world. May I say one thing before we go? Uh, one almost 100 years ago to this date, my family came from the Ukraine, from Kiev. Uh -huh. It's a gift to be able to uh -huh. say that and uh -huh. to be able to give back. So I'm sending my love and thank you for sending me my grandparents and my bubby mm -hmm. and for allowing me to have a family. Okay. And I love back to you. Just a small world. The small world. And, and this is in your DNA, Joy, the Ukrainian people. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with all of us. Our brothers and sisters, and they are good survivors. And they can say, if I say, if I, if I make it today, then tomorrow I'll be free. That tomorrow can be a good friend, use it. Thank These you. are wise words for all of us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.